Report Live starts now. Coming to you live from Studio F in Rushi, Ohio, it's the Fish Report Live Show with your hosts, Craig Fissinger and Ken Francis. Welcome everyone to another Fish Report Live. It is Wednesday night. May 29th, Ken, and uh, my name is Greg Fissner. That's Ken Francis. TK and Heavy D are back in the sound room. Sorry for being off there a little bit, Ken. We took a week off, and uh, we're back this week. Kind of wanted to see who was coming back and see if any athletes would be in regional play tonight, and certainly there are, are some are athletes still left, aren't there? Yes, there are. You know, uh, the Rushi Raider baseball team is still alive. Uh, regional play coming up here, and uh, we were fortunate to uh, go to pick with Alexander uh, Stadium tonight, a beautiful facility, a great night to watch Division Three boys and girls uh, high school track, and uh, what a night it was. Yeah, it was a good night for that, and uh, there's also, like I said, some other athletes in action. We have uh, uh, softball, Marion Local, and Covington are still playing, and baseball, we're going to be talking a little bit later about the Rushi Raiders playing Arcanum. So, like I said, uh, good reason to come back and do another show tonight. Absolutely. A lot of good uh, local athletes uh, uh, hoping to play next week in Columbus. All right. Well, after taking last week off, Ken, I kind of missed that trivia question you ask me every week, so really looking forward to what you got tonight. All right, Craig. Well, we were both there tonight to watch the uh, the uh, track, uh, the four by eight relays, the finals. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my uh, question is going to deal with that. Uh, who holds the regional record for division three girls for the fastest four by 800 meter relay? Who holds the record for the fastest four by 800 meter girls relay? Is it Versailles, Minster, Delphi St. John's or West Liberty Salem? Fastest four by eight in the regionals. Yep. Division three. Division three. Fastest four by eight I ever ran. Well, you just rattled off four good teams there, so I'll have to give that some thought and give you my answer at the end of the show. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been more than a couple years ago. Okay. All right. Well, let's set, let's start out tonight talking some track. Like we said, we went out to uh, Pickwood tonight, watched uh, some good races, and uh, you know it, it, the track actually started tonight on a on a Wednesday. Ken, it finishes up uh, here on Saturday. And uh, can you explain to our viewers out there that don't understand how that that works why exactly it goes that way yeah it's not always on a wednesday saturday sometimes it's tuesday friday that part of it kind of fluctuates but it's always a two-day race uh they'll run the finals of the four by 800 re meter relay first uh the boys and the girls sections and then they'll also do the half of the field events so uh the boys or the girls will rotate between high jump and pole vault and then they'll do the same thing between the shot and disc so so you've got uh, three finals events uh in each uh boy and girl sports that are in track that are that are held tonight and the rest of them are all prelim races so they'll run uh, two heats in in all the races the top eight will qualify for the finals on saturday they'll do that up to the distance of the 400 meter run including both hurdle races the 800 the 1600 and the 3200 do not run a prelim race and they simply have 16 uh, kids qualify for the finals all right. Well, we like I said, we got a chance to talk to some athletes tonight. We actually talked to the ones that qualified for state, asked them exactly about their performances, what they did. Also asked them about what they're looking forward to most at state next week. And let's take a look and see what they had to say. All right, Fish Report Live here with Rushi Senior, Bethany York. And Bethany, can you tell us how you did today and if you have any goals for state? Uh, today I placed fourth with a jump of 5'3", which was a PR for this season. And for state, the 5'6 school record has been staring at me for four years, so that'd be pretty nice to get. Fish Report Live here with Fairlawn Senior Trey Everett. Trey, can you tell us how you did today and if you have any goals for state? 
Uh, I got season best of 22 one and a quarter. And I got second place in long jump. And my goals for state would be to win high jump and to get second or first in long jump, depending on how I feel. Fish Report Live here with Fort Army senior Quentin Shear. Quentin, can you tell us how you did today? And if you have any goals for the state meet? Fish Report Live here with Rushi Senior, Lauren Francis. Lauren, can you tell us how you finished today and if you have any goals yet for state? We got third place today, and our goal for state is to get podium and beat the school record. Right, Fish Report Live here with uh, Rushi sophomore Emily Borchers. Emily, how would you guys finish today? We and got third place with a 9.45, and behind Minster and um, what's the reason? Do you have any goals for state? Um, to get school record, 939. Fish Report Live here with West Liberty senior Megan Vogel. Megan, can you tell us how you did today in the 4x8 and if you have any goals yet for state? Yes, we got second in the 4x8 and we ran a 943. Um, our goals for state, we would definitely want to get on the podium. And we'll see how that works out and probably just cut off more time. And Fish Report Live here with West Liberty Salem seniors Jasmine Smith and Shonda Aino. Girls, how did you do today and do you have any goals for state? Um, I think we did pretty well as a team. We're pretty excited that we got second, and we got a PR of a 9.43. Yeah, and um, we're excited for state. It's going to be a, lot, a few of our seniors' last races, so we're definitely going to go out and try to get the top three. Fish Report Live here with Fort Army Junior, Meg Wester, Heidi. Meg, can you tell us how your 4x8 team did today, and if you have any goals for state? We got fourth with a time of 9.62, and our goal for state is to run faster and get our PRs. We also asked today's qualifiers what they're looking forward to the most at next week's state meet. You've been to the state meet before. Can you tell us what you're looking forward to the most going back? I'm definitely just looking forward to the organized chaos of the Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience just to go there, so to be there for my third time will be incredible. Uh, can you tell us what you're looking forward to most going back there? Just the facility is really nice, and the atmosphere is great. The crowd going insane the whole time. And the weather holds up a lot better than last year for a good statement. And you've been to state several times before. What are you looking forward to the most going back? I'm looking forward to running in front of the big crowd, um, our spikes turning red, going shopping before, and getting pedicures. Uh, what are you looking forward to the most going back? Just best competition around. <laughs> Rushi sophomore Claire Sherman. Claire, this is your first trip to the state meet next week. What are you looking forward to the most? The thing I'm looking forward to the most is just knowing that we have nothing to lose and that the record is just going to be all ours as long as we go for it. And there's really no pressure because all we can do is our best. Been to the state meet several times before. Uh, what are you looking forward to the most going back? Um, I'm just looking forward to going with my team because we're always a lot of fun at big meets and we're always getting goofy. We just we love going to the big meets and the big meet experience, so just going with the team is probably the most exciting part. What are you looking forward to the most going back? Um, the atmosphere and all the people I love and like the competition, that's probably going to be my favorite. What are you looking forward to the most going back? Um, probably just the crowd and all the excitement. It's a pretty awesome experience. All right, Ken. Well, that was a lot of fun talking to those athletes. Uh, looking forward to them, seeing them at the state meet, and, and I'm sure they'll represent this area very well. Uh, speaking of today's performances, though, uh, any other highlights that, that you want to discuss tonight? Yeah, you know, uh, every year uh, this uh, Southwest Regional, Region 12 in, in D3 girls track and in boys track is always one of the toughest in the state. So typically, you know, those who uh, do well here in this regional, it's just tough to get out. So uh, hopefully and good luck to all those runners next week in Columbus. But, uh, yeah, some other highlights. Leah Francis from Rushi uh, won her heat in the 100-meter hurdles. Um, she also was on a couple relay teams, the 4x1 and the 4x2, along with several other Rushi Raiders that qualified on those relay teams. Uh, Liv Olivia Cummings from Farallon. She won the what shot? Yeah, she won, she won the, the shot, shot put yep. tonight. So congratulations to Olivia. Lauren Heaton, also a member of uh, a couple of the relay teams, ran a blazing 57 second 400, Craig, which is the fastest in the state right now. She won her heat in the 400. So um, the Rushi boys four by 100 meter relay team, Craig, they did not qualify. However, in the process of running tonight, they did set a school record. So congratulations to the Rushi boys. Yeah, a lot of, uh, like I said, good performances tonight. One thing I wanted to mention, I guess that got my attention as well, I was uh, before the, 
the night started, I was looking at uh, Minster's performance at the regionals in the four by eight. You know, the four by eight, uh, they've always been pretty successful in that. As a matter of fact, the last seven years at regionals, they've been uh, one, two, or three in, in the four by eight. They actually came in tonight with a number five seed. They, I think it was a 10 one. They came in there. I had a feeling that they weren't going to end up fifth and get shut out. What do you know? They won it. Well, you know, that didn't surprise me, Craig. You know, I, I knew them and West Liberty and Rushi and, and Fort Laramie would have been my predictions to be the top four. Um, and I was right there. Uh, when Minster did run their district race, Craig, they ran on a different night that all the other teams ran. And that particular night, the weather was terrible and it was super windy and rainy. So sometimes those times can be a little bit deceiving depending on what the what the weather's like when you actually run. But uh, Minster Girls, again, a uh, very good team, along with West Liberty, Rushi, uh, Fort Laramie. Covington Girls got a very good team. So it'll be a good battle this year to see who comes out of there as a the regional champion. All right, Ken. Well, that's going to do it for our track talk. The first half of this show, looking forward to talking about a little baseball, but we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk baseball. And we got a special guest. Uh, Big Dog actually is going to be joining us. So. Big Dog. All Big right. Dog. All right. We'll talk to you here in just a few. Welcome back, everyone, to the second half of Fish Report Live. Uh, Ken, before the break, we were talking a little track. We're going to change gear now and talk a little baseball. And tomorrow night, we're excited, I know, because it's the Southwest Regional Semifinal Game. That's going to pit our Rushi Raiders up against the Arcanum Trojans. Uh, it's played there at Carlton Davidson Stadium there in Springfield where the Wittenberg Tigers play. Now, originally, this game was scheduled for 2 o'clock, and it changed to 5. What happened there? Yeah, that game has been moved to 5 o'clock, Craig, um, because Tri-County North, the other team that's playing in the other semifinal game, actually has graduation tomorrow night, which is kind of interesting on a Thursday night. But uh, So Tri-County North holds graduation, so they were moved to the earlier game at 2 o'clock, therefore mo moving the Rushi Arcanum game back to 5. Well, maybe that 5 o'clock start will give a few extra Rushi Raider fans a chance to get to the game. It definitely will make it a little more convenient to get uh, over to Springfield, and hopefully all the Rushi fans come out and cheer on the uh, home team. Okay, well, I tried to get a little bit of a scouting report on the Arcanum Trojans. Don't know a lot about them. I do know they beat Lehman in their district game 8-4, to four, and I believe they have a, re or a, a star pitcher there. Their number one pitcher is a guy by the name of Jacob, Al Jacob Albog, and uh, don't know a whole lot about him, but he did seem to pitch a lot of games for Arcanum this year, and he does seem to be their ace. Uh, do you know anything about him? Yeah, I know they got a powerful hitting first baseman, and he's also their number two pitcher or their, their first reliever by the name of Grady Garno. Uh, Grady's in over 400 this year. He's also been pretty effective on the on the pitcher's mound for the Trojans. So um, expect uh, Rushi to try to keep these guys also off the base paths tomorrow night. You know, I recognize that Garno name, Ken, actually from basketball. I think he was probably a pretty decent basketball player uh, as well, which uh, makes a lot of sense in this area with small schools. Usually your star on the basketball team is typically a star on the baseball team. Yes, it is. And I noticed from the picture you see up there, uh, he's a left-hander too. So 
you know, he, uh, you know, expect Rushi to possibly see him tomorrow night, but our Canem's going to bring a good team uh, to Springfield tomorrow night, and the Raiders are going to have to play good baseball. One more name I heard over there was uh, their shortstop was a, a guy by the name of Matt Albright, and I think, you know, you talked about Garno being a 400 hitter. I think this Albright is actually a 400 hitter as well. Uh, and then one one other note on them, they're coached by a guy by the name of Randy Baker, and uh, he's the head head coach over there at our Canem. But, uh, Ken, we want to talk a little bit about the Rushi Raiders uh, tonight, and to uh, help us do that, we're we're going to bring on a guy that knows uh, a lot about it because he actually covered the district game last year. It's Big Dog. I believe we got him live on the phone right now. Big Dog, welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks for having me on. All right. Well, it's been a while since we talked to you. I think it was back during basketball season. Uh, i got to ask, are you still busy with the Wright State Raiders? I knew I knew you were in the winter. Uh, yeah, things have kind of slowed down here. Our baseball team closed out their season last week. They finished runner-up in the Horizon League tournament. Uh, softball team wrapped it up about three weeks ago, and they finished third in the league tournament. All right, well, coming up tomorrow night, like I just said, uh, told our viewers, Ken and I are very excited because our Rushi Raiders are playing against uh, our Canem, and I know you covered the Raiders district game, like I said, against uh, Fayetteville uh, last week. I want to ask you, what impresses you about the Rushi Raiders? Uh, the first thing that very impressed me in that game was the, the Raider defense. Uh, Trent Francis made that play up the middle, kind of like the Brandon Phillips kind of flip thing to the to Cole McAdowney there at short. Uh, there was a couple of nice plays in right field. The defense has definitely been the key for the Raiders, I think. Uh, big dog, hi, this is Ken. Uh, the last time Rushi was in the regional was 2011. Uh, back from that team were sh- sophomores back then, Trevor Sherman and Treg Francis. How does this experience that these two guys bring to the table tomorrow for the Raiders, uh, how's that going to pay dividends for Rushi? Oh, I think it's going to make a big difference. Even though it's just those two guys, this is what, Rushi's third trip to that regional site in the last four years. And the only other team that's ever probably ever played in that stadium is uh, Convoy Crestview, who Rushi beat in the semifinals back in 2010. Uh, Arcanum hasn't been to the regionals since 2005, and the regional was still played at Wayne High School then. They lost to Jackson Center in the regional finals that year. And in the research that I was doing, I have never seen Tri-County North make it to the regional, so I don't know if this is their first ever trip. Yeah, well, those are some good points there. Rushi has had a lot of success recently, and Coach Gold has been a part of that. He's in a second year at Rushi. He's done a great job this year. He's got his team at 22-7. and seven. Uh, They've been Shelby County League champions both years that he's been here. They were district champions this year. Um, considering baseball and the co- how competitive it is in this area, what are your thoughts on the Rushi program? Oh, he, Coach Gold has done a, a great job, especially this year. I mean, you take a look at Rushi's seven losses. You have two losses to Lormy that ended up being in the sectional. They made it to the sectional finals. You lost to Minster, who lost to the, made it to the di- district semifinals. West Liberty Salem made it to the sectional finals. And then you got Versailles, Lehman, and St. Henry, and they all made it to the district finals. Usually in high school baseball, there's usually one or two games that you happen to lose during the regular season that you kind of say, ah, we shouldn't have lost that game. That was kind of a bad loss. Well, you can't say that about Rushi this year. Yeah, they've played a very competitive schedule, and I think that's really helped get them ready for the postseason play. And uh, let's talk about Minster just a minute. Uh, last year we talked to Coach West from Minster, and he said, you know, in order for things to go right in baseball, a lot of times it just takes a little bit of luck. Do you agree with us? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, take that Fayetteville game. And yeah, it was. It ended up being kind of a laugher, being seven and nothing. But like that play that Francis made, it was still a one nothing game. You know, if that goes through, maybe it's one to one. Maybe it's bases loaded. You, you, you don't know what would happen in that game. And then that later on in the game, uh, there was a nice play out there in right field on the relay. There's there was a nice catch in right field. You just never know what's going to happen. All right, Big Dog, listen, one more question and we'll let you go. But I know you can't look ahead in these uh, these games at all. Most people consider that bad luck to do so, but uh, it's just me and you talking here, okay? So let's say that the, the, the winner of this regional, the re- winner of this game tomorrow night, they actually play again Friday night uh, at 5 p.m. I, I want to ask you, does either team give consideration to saving their pitcher uh, once you get to a certain point in the game? I don't know if you can take that, that kind of chance. I mean, get these high school games, they can, they can turn so quickly on the big stage. You just don't know what kids are going to do in certain situations. I, I think you got to go and get the win and then go from there come Friday. Well, fortunately for Rushi, in their case, they, they do have a pretty deep 
pitching staff. So uh, uh, I don't think there, you know, would probably be any reason to save a pitcher. Uh, in Rushi's case, there, there always seems to be a good one that's uh, that that's warming up and ready to go. Yeah, the, just from the the times that I've covered with the paper and everything, and like you said, it looks like there's two or three, four different guys that can go. And like I said, Rushi has played in that big stadium. Uh, that, that's going to be a big difference tomorrow. You're, you're so used to playing at these little high school fields, and you maybe have like a little bit of seating. This is going to be actually at a stadium. And the Rushi kids have played there three times over the last four years. And like I said, other than Crestview played there three years ago, none of these other teams that have probably ever played in a game at that mag- magnitude in that big of a facility. Well, Big Dog, uh, you know, I hope you're right. Uh, I have to agree with you. And uh, we really thank you a lot for uh, being on our show tonight. Uh, just curious, are you covering the game tomorrow night? Uh, no, I won't be at the game tomorrow night. Uh, Wright State is hosting a Division Three regional for softball this year. And uh, we have Miami East playing against Claremont Northeastern. And the winner of that plays uh, Columbus Bishop Reedy in the finals, hopefully on Saturday, weather permitting. Okay, well, uh, again, thanks for uh, joining us on the show tonight. All right, thanks for having me. Thanks, Big Dog. All right, that was uh, our old friend Big Dog. Uh, like I said, last time we talked to him, it was basketball season. Good to bring him on the show again. Yes, it was. You know, he knows a lot about sports. Uh, you know, it's nice that he covers the area. He also joined us on our show here once in a while. So, uh, yeah, good talking to Big Dog, and uh, hope to see him around again sometime soon. All right. Well, you know, Ken, one of the first things he mentioned was the the Rushi defense. And I got to agree with him. I mean, they, they've, this last couple of games, they've been making plays everywhere in the outfield. You know, I, Brian Dries has been playing right field for him and, and making kind of some acrobatic plays out there, doing a good job. Their, their whole outfield solid, the infield solid. Uh, Trevor Sherman's doing a nice job behind the plate right now. And uh, I'm just, I think that defense can carry a long way yeah they're they're playing well right now and uh hopefully uh they can find some gaps tomorrow score some runs and, and get another w all right well ken i got a little bit of more a little bit more baseball talk here and this week i actually got a tweet uh from uh, someone by the name of dhs bulldog which i think stands for defiance high school baseball and he said exactly fish report may i request some wapak and defiance baseball tournament talk on your next show now i know walpawk and defiance baseball is good unfortunately i don't know anything about them and so i thought maybe we could go back to our sound room those guys back there seem to know a little bit of everything i gotta ask you guys can you help me out here we want a little walpawk and defiance baseball talk what can you tell me well craig uh like you said don't talk a lot about the baseball from up there in the western buckeye league uh, a little bit north of here and uh, mostly d2 but uh, did a little bit of research, and uh, this isn't probably a big secret to Defiance Baseball Dog up there, but those are two, two very good programs between Walpawk and uh, Defiance. Walpawk, they have seven Western Buckeye League championships to their, to their credit, and uh, one runner-up uh, at uh, the state championship, which was last year in D2. They lost to uh, Columbus St. Francis de Salle. Uh, this year they are 18 and five. They have lost, however, to um, Defiance back in April. And Defiance this year is a stellar 27 and one. So I think uh, Defiance is looking for a little bit of revenge. Uh, they swept their league, went nine and zero. They both these teams are still in the tournament. And if they win tomorrow, they will play each other on Friday. Uh, Defiance has won the last eight of nine Western Buckeye League titles. So they are it looks like they are the kingpin up there right now with. Um, some really good baseball, three trips to the state championship and one state championship back in 92. So uh, I'd say if you're up around, uh, I think it's uh, Tiffin, where they're playing, you're going to see some good baseball uh, tomorrow and uh, Friday with these two teams. And correct me if I'm wrong, TK, but I believe Defiance has actually had a major leaguer uh, come out of that program, haven't they? Uh, they actually have four major leaguers wow. have come out of that uh that program and two are still active. They've got Chad Billingsley at uh, the LA Dodgers and John Neese and uh, he's at the New York Mets. Uh, I could go on. They've got uh, quite a bit of minor league experience as well as some uh, really good uh, D1, D2 uh, NCAA players out of that uh, out of that um, school. So yeah, they've got quite the history of uh, baseball up there. Heavy D, how can uh, how can a program like Defiance put out four? Four guys that play professional baseball, and Rushi's never put out a one. Uh, I think I think we'll challenge that. I believe there was a 1971 grad, Don Cordonier, got drafted by the Cleveland Indians. 
Is that correct? I, I, Don, believe that's, I believe that's correct. Ken, can you back me that, on that? That is absolutely correct. Yeah, Don Cananya did uh, play minor league baseball for the Cleveland Indians. He's a uh, claim to fame as he was drafted before Keith Hernandez. Is that right? You ever hear of Keith Hernandez? I know Keith One Hernandez. of the best hitting first basemen of all time. Don Cardano was drafted before Keith Hernandez. Wow. I, so. I don't know anything about Wapak or Defiance baseball, so I won't claim to. But I'll tell you what, that big, do- big dog, he's a class act. Uh, I've known Big Dog for about 37 years, and that guy's been keeping stats since he's been five years old. And uh, I'd, I'd put him up against anybody in the greater tri-state area when it comes to stats and just about anything about anything related to sports. Well, I'll agree with that. And uh, I do know one other thing about Defiance Baseball, and I, and, and I don't know exactly the, the, the data here, but I think they have not lost a league game in like seven years. They've won like 65 straight uh, league games. Wow. Okay. And I know Walpock is an extremely talented team. Um, they've got a couple really good pitchers up there. And, uh, you know, look for them uh, to probably both win, I would predict, uh, their semifinal game and watch them do battle in the regional championship. That would be a rematch of last year, I guess. Yes, it would. All right, Ken. Well, that's going to do it for our baseball talk. Just one more thing to do, and that is get back to that trivia question you asked me at the beginning of the night. Why don't you tell it to me again? All right. Which girls team holds the regional record for the fastest 4 by 800 meter relay ever ran at the regionals? All right. Is it Versailles, Minster, Delphi St. John's, or West Liberty Salem? Well, that's a great question. And like I said, four very good teams there. I, I really don't know what the answer is, but since I was uh, saying how great uh, Minster was from going from the number five seed to winning the four by eight tonight, that's going to have to be my pick, the Minster Wildcats. Well, you're right, Craig, and they set the record in 2003. They ran a 923, which is smoking fast. That is fast. Okay, and and a couple of the the girls on this team, you'll recognize these names. Uh, One was a Luthman, which I don't know who that was. One is a Gruber, okay, but another one is Kristen Shank. I know Kristen very well. And the, the anchor, I'm sure, was a girl by the name of Sonny Olding. She didn't turn into a bad runner either. No, so. she did all right. <laughs> so. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's a great uh, great question, and uh, that's going to do it for our show tonight, Ken. It was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. And, again, good luck to all the local area athletes competing in uh, regional semifinals and regional finals this coming weekend. And uh, best of luck to the Rushi Raiders. Yeah, we might have one more show on us yet. We're going to see how things uh, – a pan out here in the next week, and uh, if it's uh, worth coming back on, Ken, we'll uh, we'll do one more show to close the season out. Sounds great to me. All right, we'll uh, we'll talk to everyone hopefully next week. Until then, have a great rest of the week, and good night, everyone. From Studio F in Rushi, Ohio, for Ken Francis, Craig Kissinger, and TK, this is Heavy D signing off, saying good night and good fishing.